Okay, I want to start off giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and salutations to the Akim around the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth with faith and sincerity, and risking their lives and freedom to do so um, more than now than more now than ever. Um, shalom to the confusion of faith, brethren out there, join on to our ranks, as well as those who are hoping to join on to our ranks. Shalom to the Akwath and the Akim out there, listening and learning. This is the brother Yawasap out of GMS Cleveland Church, um, a fellow servant, coming at you with another lesson, giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Wow, Yahweh Shah. Um, so I like it. tired. <laughs> I don't want to rise us up. Most High give me the um, strength and spirit to get through this lesson. Uh, coming at you again with a, um, I'm doing a series on um, Kingdom of the Beast as far as um, just you know uh, information about the different things Esau is trying to do as far as in his kingdom it's not just the chip it's just the whole little system that he's trying to set up you know I was just watching the, um, the movie Upgrade and um, you know just like with a society where you know everything is constantly surveillance you know what I mean with the, you know, how they had the drones when they watched, well, I don't want to tell the movie if you haven't seen it, but, you know, like a surveillance thing. That's what Esau has planned, but not just that. I came across a book, um, it's called What the Future Looks Like by Jim R. Khalili. Um, so, I'm going to start with the scripture, then we're going to go into the book. Uh, this is 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. It says, Least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of these devices. And the Most High uh, has put you know, the Spirit on men of the Lord to be diligent in the search, to search out, and or not even search out, because sometimes, you know, I've heard uh, Brother speak on, uh, me myself have personal testimonies. I, I, you know, I've always been into reading. You know, I've, I've seen how some brothers... They, they say that they never like to read, but they can read the scriptures back and forth. You know what I mean? It's just, that's how you know the power of the Most High. You know, a, a man that doesn't like to read, but can read the scriptures back and front. But the scriptures are a special kind of book. You know what I mean? Like I said, everything you can imagine is in the scriptures. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I've always myself enjoyed reading. But um, with this truth, you know, sometimes I don't even be seeking certain information. It just happens to, you know, that's just the Most High in the spirit of Yahweh by Yahshua, Yahweh Shah. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to jump straight into the book. Um, I don't have any precepts lined up, so if you come across any, or if it's, um, if it's um, anything pertinent, or like I said, precepts to anything I'm reading, feel free to leave them on the comment board. It's, I guess, different, you know, um, articles by different people. So, um, you know, you got different subsections. It says the future of our planet, the future of us, future online, uh, making the future, the far future. So it's like 225 pages. What I'm going to start with is uh, it's the future of our planet, demographics, conservative, and climate change. Uh, if I choose to read that, I'll read that another day. We're going to go into the future of us, uh, medicine, genetics, and transhumanism. And the first one is by Adam Kukarski, The Future of Medicine. We're going to start on page 52. I believe I was already reading out of this, though. It says the future of medicine. It's lucky the future of us. Medicine, genetics, and transhumanism. It says on April 26, 2016, a microscope new... It's lucky. A microscopic new threat appeared in Pennsylvania, USA. While the nation's attention was on the presidential primary being held in the state, that day, a woman had arrived at a health clinic with symptoms of a bacterial infection. Doctors took a urine sample and tests showed E. coli to be the culprit. But when the, isol when the isolate, isolate was so lucky, isolate was sent for further testing, it turns out that this was no ordinary strain of E. coli bacteria. Given concern about drug resistance, a local laboratory had just started testing samples for resistance to it, an antibiotic called colistatin. Discovered in 1949, colistatin, a so-called 
last resort drug. It's not commonly prescribed anymore because of the damage it can do to people's kidneys and it's therefore used only against bacteria that can be treated with other, less harsh antibiotics. And that's what made the sample from Pennsylvania unusual. It contained a gene that made the bacteria resistant to it's like it to colistin. Although health agencies had spotted the gene elsewhere in the world, it was the first time it had been seen in the U.S. Fortunately, the Pennsylvania sample wasn't resistant to all antibiotics, but it demonstrated that such infections are chipping away at our lines of defense. It basically shows us that the end of the road isn't very far away for antibiotics. Said Tom Freedom, director of the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention at the time. Fifty years earlier, such statements might have seemed absurd. The 1960s was a time of optimism. Optimism, Salakia. Antibiotics such as penicillin have been used widely and effectively for a Salakia for almost a decade. Albert Salvin had developed a polio vaccine that could be taken with a sugar cube. Diseases such as tuberculosis were finally becoming curable. 1967, William Stewart, the U.S. Surgeon General, even claimed that the war against infectious diseases had been won, that the war is still being fought today, despite intense vac vaccination campaigns. Salakia. Polio has not been eradicated. Drug-resistant superbugs are making penicillin ineffective and tuberculosis deadly again. And um, I'm just going to interject real quick. I mean, I'm not going to get a scripture, but, you know, Esau thinking that he's discovered him, he's, you know, the conqueror and cure of all things went, yeah, of course these diseases will never be just completely eradicated because, you know, f um, plagues and pestilences is all the work of the most high, you know what I mean? Like these diseases, you know, um, that even the ones that Esau is holding in laboratories that he's going to release in the day of trouble and Jacob's trouble, you know what I mean? Those are, even though some things Esau has actually physically created at the end of the day, you know, it all ultimately goes back to the most high. Drug resistant super bugs are making penicillin ineffective and tuberculosis daily again. Meanwhile, we face the ongoing specter of a new pan pandemic, perhaps flu, perhaps something else, and the wider health range, Salakia, and the wider health challenges of an aging population. However, we are also seeing remarkable developments in medical science from genetics and personalized treatment to regenerative medicine and long distance surgery. So where does that leave us? Should we be optimistic or pessimistic? What will the future of medicine look like? The next epidemic. In medicine, there's always potential for surprises. Sir William Osler, who pioneered modern medical training in the early 20th century once described this field as an art of probability and science of uncertainty take infectious diseases it is near certainty that we will see another major viral pandemic within our lifetime which is a given you know what i'm saying as for where when and which virus we can only take an educated guess osler himself died in 1919 during the infamous spanish flu pandemic which killed more than it's like it killed more people than the whole of the First World War. It's like you had, uh, what's that, the Black Death? You know, that's a lot of Israelites actually died from the Black Death, you know, man. So that was all to, due to the Most High. So far in the 21st century, there have been several new viral threats, including SARS in 2003. In 2003. Influenza A. H1N1, P, aka swine flu in 2009, and Ebola in 2014. Though serious, all three have biological features that work in our favor. Patients with SARS or Ebola generally, generally show symptoms when they were infectious, which meant that health agencies could track down people with, with whom they'd been recent, had been recent contact and quarantined them bringing the outbreaks under control. Flu is much harder to track in this way, but luckily the 2009 strain was far less deadly than the devastating 1919 variant. This luck was important because during a new outbreak, we often lack effective drugs and vaccines. I'm gonna stop there.